there. Welcome to Town Church. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Whether you are watching on our Facebook, on our YouTube, or on our website, we want to encourage you to like, subscribe, to follow, and to check back to see what's going on in the life of the church. If this is your first time joining us, we want to say thank you for joining us, and we want to connect with you. You can go to our website, www.town.church. connect and inside there's a connect card for you to fill out so that we can connect with you. We thank you again for joining us for our Victorious Sermon Series. Today, Pastor Mark will be preaching about Victorious Over Diseases. Before that will be a worship set from our worship band. We hope that you are encouraged and blessed by that. Join me afterwards. I'll have a few more announcements for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. again hallelujah 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 how can we stand and sing it See, my weapon is 
his melody. Heaven comes to fight for me. In the presence of my enemies, louder than the unbelief, my weapon is a melody. Heaven comes to fight for me, sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Out from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. So raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. 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 Do you know someone who has tried to get help and maybe even turned to professionals and yet there's still no breakthrough? I mean, they're going through a struggle, they're going through a challenge and they're turning here, they're turning there and maybe even they've turned to professional help and yet there's still no breakthrough. I mean, maybe it's an addiction. They're struggling with some form of addiction. They've went to get help, but they're still struggling with that addiction. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's insomnia. Maybe it's infertility. Maybe it's a battle with cancer. And they want help. They want answers. They want solutions. Maybe even turning to professional help and still not receiving the breakthrough that they desire. Well, we're going to look at a person just like that today in the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. We're going to look at this unnamed woman. We don't even know her name. We don't know her age. Uh, we don't know what she looked like. We don't know what town she was from. We don't know her personality. But we know she had a need. We know that she had a need and she wanted help. She wanted healing. She wanted breakthrough. And she turned here for help and she turned there for help. And instead of, instead of getting better, she got worse. And finally, she comes to Jesus. And it's Jesus that actually helps her. You see, we're going through a sermon series right now entitled Victorious. And we've talked about victorious over disaster, uh, victorious over demonic powers. Next week, we'll look at victorious over death. But today, we're going to talk about victorious over disease. And when I go through this message today, yes, we will be talking about physical disease but don't only think about physical disease. Whatever the problem you're facing, whatever the challenge, whatever the struggle, there is victory in Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bible today, won't you go ahead and take it, turn over to Mark chapter 5, and I want to read verses 21 through 34. Now, in this section of Mark, and Mark does this at times, we call it the Mark and Sandwiches, what Mark will do at times, he'll start one story, interrupt that story, and then pick back up with the original story and conclude it. And that's what you have, have happened today in the text. So let's begin with this first story. He'll interrupt it to focus on the story we want to look at today. 
And then next week, we'll talk about the story he began with. So let's look beginning with verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Remember, uh, he traveled across the Sea of Galilee. There was the big storm. He calmed the storm. He went to, into a Gentile region. He freed the demoniac who was possessed with many evil spirits. Now he's coming back to uh, Galilee, and there he's going to meet uh, not only a man that needs his daughter healed and eventually raised from the dead, but also this unnamed woman is going to step into his life. Verse 22, Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet. He, he fell at the feet of Jesus and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she be, may be made well and live. And he went with him. And what we're going to see next week is this little girl actually died and Jesus raises her from the dead. But that's next week when we talk about victorious over death. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments. And his disciples said to him, you, you see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. We're going to talk today about this unnamed woman. We know the name of Jairus. We know he was a synagogue ruler. We know that he had a daughter who was 12 years of age. But we don't know as much about this unnamed woman. But one thing we do know is that she had a physical illness that nobody could help her. And it was a physical illness that also had social and religious implications. And finally, she comes to Jesus and she is made well. So we're going to talk about this woman today and we're going to talk about this story and how Jesus is victorious over disease. And so as we go through this story, I want to build it around three words. And those three words are desperation, determination, and restoration. So let's first of all begin with the idea of desperation. This woman was desperate. She was in a desperate situation. You see, the Bible says she had a hemorrhage in her body. And, and most likely, this was a menstrual disorder. She had this discharge of blood. She, she had this flow of blood. And it was something that had actually lasted for 12 years. And you see, because in that day and time, according to the Old Testament and according to Jewish worship, when you had a discharge of blood, when you had a hemorrhage like this lady had, it actually rendered you ceremonially unclean. And so you were considered unclean. So you weren't able to go to the temple. You weren't able to worship. You weren't able to enjoy fellowship. This lady was not only physically suffering, but she was socially suffering and she was spiritually suffering. Let me remind you what the Bible says about this in Leviticus chapter 15, verses 25 through 27. It says, When a woman has a discharge of blood for many days at a time, 
other than her monthly period or has a discharge that continues beyond her period, she will be unclean as long as she has the discharge, just as in the days of her period. And any bed she lies on while her discharge continues will be unclean, as is her bed during her monthly period, and anything she sits on will be unclean, as during her period. Anyone who touches them will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. So according to the Old Testament, a woman during her period, during her monthly cycle, was actually ceremonially unclean and not able to go to the temple, not able to worship, not able to be involved in fellowship. And because this flow of blood took place on a regular basis and actually occurred for 12 years, she lived basically in a permanent state of uncleanness. She couldn't go to church. She couldn't worship. She, she couldn't fellowship. So this was not just a physical illness. This was also a social problem and a religious problem. And, and not only that, but she was probably shunned by society. Because when you're unclean, if you get too close to someone, they can become unclean as well. And that's probably why she came to Jesus in secret behind him and didn't really come and talk to him about her need. But she came behind him and just touched his garment because she really wasn't supposed to be around him because she was in a state of uncleanness. Also, this woman was probably single or divorced because it was taboo to to be involved in sexual intimacy with the discharge of blood that was forbidden. And according to you know, Jewish tradition and Jewish laws of that day, if you were married, you were expected to be intimate and you were expected to bear children for your husband. And so if you couldn't do those things, the husband had a right to divorce you according to the Jewish, Jewish beliefs of that day. So she probably either was single and never got married because of the discharge of blood, or if she got married and then developed the problem, she was probably divorced. And in that day as a woman, if you were single or divorced, you didn't have the protection and provision that you needed. This woman was in a desperate situation. We know she was broke because it says she spent all the money she had on physicians, and instead of getting better, she got worse. She was desperate. She, she had this need and, and she had this problem. She had this concern. And everywhere she turned, even when she turned to the professionals, even when she turned to the physicians, they still were not able to help her. She was in a desperate situation. Think about it. Her illness continued in spite of time. You know, sometimes people say, time heals all wounds. Well, not always. Some things get worse with time rather than better. I mean, you think about wine. Wine gets better with time, but milk gets worse with time. And you think about a grudge. A grudge doesn't get better with time. You think about an addiction. An addiction doesn't get better with time. Time doesn't heal all wounds. And this illness continued in spite of time. Twelve years it's interesting to compare and contrast these two stories because you have Jairus who has this daughter who's 12 and he's had 12 wonderful years with her and now she's sick and, and eventually she's going to die and Jesus is going to resurrect her. But he's had 12 years with his daughter and yet this woman has had 12 years of suffering, 12 years of pain. Her illness continued in spite of time, and, and that developed that sense of desperation. Her illness not only continued in spite of time, but it continued in spite of treatment. I mean, she got the treatment that was available. She went to, it. the Bible says, many physicians. So she didn't just go to one doctor. She went to many different physicians, many different doctors, it says she spent all she had. I mean, she spent all the money she had on these doctors and physicians. And instead of getting better, she got worse. I mean, that would make you desperate. 
I mean, and not only that, but it says she suffered much under these physicians. So, so not just that she spent all her money, she actually suffered. I mean, the medical care back then was not what it is today. I mean, they had some barbaric practices like bloodletting and, and uh, other practices that, you know, today we would say, wow, how could they even believe that would help? Well, they just didn't have the medical knowledge and the medical expertise that we have today. And so even though she went to these physicians and got treatment and the professional care of that day, she didn't get better, she got worse. Isn't it interesting how often we will try all of these other options and instead of making the Lord our first resort, we make Him our last option. And so we go here, we go there, we try this, we try that. And then if it doesn't work out, then we go to the Lord. You see, this lady, she tried all of these physicians and spent all of her money. And then when nothing else worked, then she turned to Jesus. You see, Jesus should be our first option. He should be the first one that we go to. But to be honest with you, so often we don't. We try to figure it out ourselves. We, we try to handle it on our own. We try to go to the professionals of our day. But you know, there's an old saying, man's extremity is God's opportunity. And sometimes when we're in that desperate situation, we're in a state of extremity. We don't know what to do. We've availed ourselves of all the options. There's no breakthrough. There's no answer. There's no solution. Then we will fall upon the Lord and we will say, God, you are my only hope. And sometimes that's when God really comes through because that's when he can flex his muscles and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it was God who made a way and it was God who helped you. You see, this woman was desperate. Her illness continued in spite of time. It continued in spite of treatment. She didn't get better. She got worse. She spent all the money she had. She was broke. She was ill. She was separated from the religious community. She was a social outcast. She had this physical illness. Desperation was what she was experiencing. Maybe you have that sense of desperation. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your child, maybe it's your grandchild, maybe it's your spouse, and you just feel desperate. There's an issue, there's a struggle, there's something, you need a solution. And no matter where you turn, no matter what you do, you just feel like you're hitting brick wall after brick wall. Jesus, He can give you the breakthrough that you need. Well, the second word that I want to share with you today is determination. Yes, this woman was experiencing desperation, but she also demonstrated determination. I mean, this woman was determined to get healed. She had made her mind up, I'm getting to Jesus. And think about the circumstances. Jairus had already approached Jesus. He had already signed up for the first slot. Jesus was supposed to help him. And they were traveling back to his home, and a great crowd of people were around Jesus as they were traveling to Jairus' home. And she had said she had heard about Jesus. She had heard that he could heal her. And, And now, though, he's going with Jairus, and it's a very urgent matter. He has a daughter that's very sick. She's close to death. Eventually, she will die. And so she could have thought if she knew anything about the circumstances, she could have thought, well, he's too busy. It's, there's a more pressing matter. I, I don't need to interrupt him. Or even just because of the great crowd around Jesus, she could have said, there's no way I can get through the crowd. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to him another day. But that's not what this woman did. She was determined. She said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. She said, he doesn't even have to talk to me. He doesn't even have to know my name. He doesn't even have to know that I touched him. 
If I can just get through the crowd, if I can just somehow press through the people and make my way through and just barely touch one of his garments, I will be healed. She was determined and she did touch Jesus. Let me ask you, with the problem that you're facing, are you determined to get through? Are you determined to find the breakthrough? We need that spirit of determination. I think about people in the Bible that demonstrated that type of faith and that type of determination. I think about Jacob over in Genesis 32 when it talks about him wrestling with the angel of the Lord. And, and he was afraid to see his brother Esau again, and he's praying and wrestling with this angel of the Lord. And it gets near to the, the time when, when sunshine is about to appear and the night is going to be over. And the angel of the Lord says, release me. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That's uh, Genesis 32, verse 26. Jacob said to the angel of the Lord, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Man, that's determination. That's being dogged. That is persevering. That is saying, almost in a way, I'm not taking no for an answer determination. And at times, God honors that faith and that determination. I think about another story, and it's found in Matthew chapter 15. And you have Jesus, and he's in a Gentile region again, uh, Syrophoenicia. And, and while he's over there, this lady comes, this Gentile woman, and her daughter is demon-possessed. And she comes to Jesus asking for help, and, and Jesus actually ignores her. He doesn't even talk to her. And so it actually it kind of sounds and seems rude. Now, we'll figure out that really Jesus is testing her faith, but she comes to Jesus. She has this daughter who's demon-possessed. She asks for help, and Jesus doesn't even answer her a word. And then she persists. And then Jesus says, you know, basically, I've been sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. I'm here to help the, the Jewish people. I'm not here at this point for Gentiles. I'm here for the Jewish people. And yet she just, keep, she just kept pressing on and pressing on. And then he said, it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. At that time, Gentiles were referred to as dogs. And so it almost sounded like an insult, like, like Jesus was not only ignoring her, but almost like he was insulting her. He wasn't. He was testing her faith. And this is what the woman said. She was very witty and very determined. Matthew 15, verse 27, she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She said, if you want to compare me to a dog, if you want to say you can't give the children's bread to the dogs, she said, remember, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. And after that, Jesus said, woman, great is your faith. If that's what you want, I'm going to give it to you. You see, she hung in there. Jesus ignored her at first, and then he said, I'm only here for the Israelites. And then he said, I can't give the children's bread to dogs. And every time she would not be denied, she would not take no for an answer. She had a spirit of determination. And finally, Jesus, he acquiesced and said, great is your faith. Your daughter is healed. And she was released from the power of the demonic and you see this at different times, not just Genesis 32 and Matthew 15 and here in Mark 5, but you see at times this spirit that people have of determination. And God honors it. And that, this woman, she had to have that spirit of determination. Man, she had been sick for 12 years. And it would have been easy to give up. It would have been easy to just say, well, this is my lot in life. But she kept believing, she kept pressing, she kept trying. 
Let me ask you, what must you press through in order to get to Jesus? This woman had to press through that crowd in order to touch his garment. What must you press through in order to get to Jesus? Is it your pride? Is that what what is holding you back? Is that an obstacle between you and Jesus, your pride? Oh, I can fix it. I can take care of it. No, we need to set our pride aside and realize, realize only the Lord can help me here. Or, or is it unbelief? Is that the obstacle? You don't really believe God loves you? You don't really believe God wants to help you? After all these years, you think, well, maybe God is just angry with me or God is too busy to help me? Is it your unbelief? Is it a sense of unworthiness? Is that the obstacle? Standing between you and Jesus, you just feel like, well, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy for the Lord to help me. I haven't lived a perfect life. I haven't always had the faith and always had the type of lifestyle I should have. God's not going to help me. Well, yeah, we're all unworthy. But God doesn't help us because we're worthy. God helps us because he's merciful. That's why God helps us. And so lay aside your pride and cast off your unbelief and don't let your unworthiness hold you back. Press through the crowd. Press through the obstacles and touch Jesus and be touched by Jesus. Listen, that's determination. And so we have desperation. We have this woman that was desperate. We have determination. She was determined to touch Jesus. And then one other word I want to give you, and that word is restoration. The Bible says in verse 29, and immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Can you imagine the joy that she felt? Twelve years with a hemorrhage, 12 years with a discharge of blood, and immediately she was healed. You know, it's interesting to see the times in the gospel when it says immediately someone was healed. Mark chapter 1, verse 42, and immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Mark chapter 10, verse 52, and immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Do you know that Jesus can touch you and touch you in such a powerful way that you can be healed of your disease immediately? Now, I'm not saying that's always the way it happens, but I'm saying it can happen that way because Jesus has all power. He is victorious over disaster. He is victorious over demonic powers. And what we're seeing today is he is victorious over disease. Now, she was healed in response to her faith. Jesus says, daughter, and isn't that so comforting and just a a tender way of uh, speaking to this lady? Jesus calls her daughter. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. And actually in the Greek, that phrase is sozo, which means your faith has saved you. And sometimes save can be used of physical healing. But I think what, what Mark is saying here, that this healing that the woman received, it was not just a physical healing. It was a spiritual healing too, because he says to her, go in peace which means go in a right relationship with God. You have found peace with God. Go in peace. She was saved, not just healed, saved. And Jesus says, it's your faith that has made you well. She was healed in response to her faith. You say, well, what was her faith? Because it almost seems a little magical or a little superstitious to think, well, I'll just touch his garment and I'll be healed. Well, her faith was, Jesus doesn't even need to know 
that I'm in the crowd. He doesn't even have to know my name. He has so much power. If I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. And you know, Jesus said after that happened, because he felt, it's, it's interesting, it says he felt the power leaving him to heal this woman. He felt something. And he stopped. Now think about there are this big throng of people, the crowd, they're going to Jairus' home to heal his daughter. And all these people are walking. I'm sure they're walking briskly. And all of a sudden, Jesus just stops. And the whole procession stops. And he's looking around, who touched me? Hey, who touched me? And the disciples are like, really, Jesus? Who touched you? We're all touching you. We're all bumping shoulders with you. We're all walking together and thronging you. You've been touched by no telling how many people since we've been walking. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that type of touch. I'm asking who touched me with the touch of faith? Listen, there's a message there. All those people were around Jesus. All those people were walking with Jesus, rubbing shoulders with Jesus, thronging Jesus, but she was the only one who really touched him. She touched him with the touch of faith. And I wonder how many times we gather for worship and we sing the songs and we hear the Bible being preached and taught, but do we really touch Jesus? And have we really been touched by Jesus? You see, this woman, she touched him with the touch of faith, believing, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And Jesus called her out. He didn't call her out to embarrass her. He called her out to confirm her faith and let her know, you have been healed. You have been forgiven. Go in peace. You're right with God now. You're saved and it was a powerful moment in her life. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Twelve years of suffering. Twelve years of being a social outcast. Twelve years of not being able to go to church and worship. And now... She's made right physically and spiritually. That is restoration. And I'm sure she was praising God for that. Well, what, what, what can we take away from a story like this? What can we take away? And again, yes, you may have a physical disease, and this may be pertinent to that, but there may be other struggles and challenges in your life. Let me just share a few concluding thoughts. One is, keep believing in spite of the obstacles in your way. This woman did not give up the hope of being healed. You know, there's a quote that I heard many years ago, and it says, God's delays are not God's denials. And sometimes there are, there are delays, and things don't happen as quickly as we would like them to. Man, I'm sure this woman, she thought, oh, maybe I'll be healed within the first year, or the second year, or the third year. I'm sure when she developed this discharge of blood, this hemorrhage, she never dreamed that she'd suffer for 12 years. But she didn't give up. Even after 12 years and going to all these different physicians and spending all of her money, when she heard about Jesus she said, maybe he's the one that can help me. Keep believing. Yeah, you may not have been healed yet. The solution may not have come yet. The breakthrough may not have come yet. Don't give up. God has a plan. God is able. I would give you another piece of advice. Don't think that people have all the answers. I mean, that's something I think we learned from this text. Now, I don't think this text is saying you shouldn't go to a doctor or, or physicians are going to hurt you instead of help you. Again, medical science back then was, was very rudimentary and not the type of medical knowledge that we have today. 
And so, yeah, there are times that we go to our doctors and they're very helpful and nothing from this message is intended to say, don't ever seek professional help. But I do think there is a message here. Don't think that people have all the answers. You know, this is a reminder that you can go to the professionals and you can go to people and you can go to those with degrees and expertise and they still may not be able to help you. People don't have all the answers. And sometimes, my friend, there's only one who can help you, and that's Jesus. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. And sometimes when we avail ourselves of all these other options and there's no hope and no help, we really turn to the Lord. And we say, Lord, unless you come through, there's no way I'm going to be helped or healed. Don't think that people have all the answers. And then one last thing. Trust in Jesus to heal you spiritually. No matter if you have a physical illness or not, you need spiritual healing. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there's a greater disease, there's a greater illness than any type of physical disease. The greatest disease is the disease of sin. And it's infected all of us. And we all need to be made whole. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Your faith has saved you. Trust in Jesus. He died on the cross for your sins. He was resurrected bodily on the third day. And all who believe in him can be forgiven and have the gift of eternal life. Trust in Jesus today for the forgiveness of sins. Would you bow with me for prayer? Father, we come to you today. We thank you for this woman, a woman of desperation, a woman of determination, and a woman who then experienced restoration. And God, I pray for all that are facing trials and challenges and need breakthrough, that God, you would send them the help they need Give them a spirit of hope and sustain them through this time. And any that need to be saved, I pray you would save them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we thank you again for joining us today for worship. If you feel led to respond in any way, whether that's prayer or just have some questions, we would love to pray for you. We would love to answer your questions. You can go to the link in the video description down below, or you can go to our website to ask for prayer that way. We also want to encourage you to give your tithes and offering online. You can do that by going to www.town.church invest. And inside there is a way to give online. There's also a tutorial if you've never done it before. We also want to encourage you to join us each and every day for our daily devos with Pastor Mark for the year. You can find that on our podcast channel, Town Church, or at www.town.church slash podcast. Well, again, we are so glad that you've joined us. We hope that you were blessed and encouraged. And until we see you again next week, God bless.